Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Um, so hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. Yeah. We we didn't get we didn't get here the day after Christmas like we had planned. No, we didn't. That's that's you can blame you can blame me for that one. Yeah, that, and I, really, you can blame my poor planning because everything that led to, that led to those events was fully within my control. Like, and I had full knowledge of. I just didn't put it all together. <laughs> yeah, um, there was a you know a string of family things and health things and so forth that has um, that have provided impediments to us getting a new podcast up as quickly as we had planned. Yeah. That being said, here we are. <laughs> yes, we are and here today. We're, we're planning to do another one this week, yep. hopefully, to make up for it. I, I, yeah. um, so, yay for that. And uh, also, uh, in now I've been given to understand at this point that it is... Uh, that it is bad luck to wish New Year's before the New Year, so we'll we'll wait on that. We'll hold off to the um, next one. That doesn't preclude me from talking about <laughs> the upcoming year, though. Uh, so we've got some plans. Um, we have uh, some intro outro stuff, which we really haven't actually gotten the chance to record a good version of, but um, something that will go in. So you're just going to get more, you know, more of the amenities in the yeah. podcast. Um, I also have uh, some new microphones. And everything I need except cables. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, they are on their way. Cool. Hopefully we'll be here. Probably not before we do the next podcast, though, unfortunately. Uh, just based on, you know, um, Prime does the two-day delivery, two-day shipping thing. Yeah. Um, which sounds great until you come to realize that that's going to be two days from whenever they decide to ship it. <laughs> that's two days in transit, not two days Period. From the order, yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, the still waiting. <laughs> yeah, patiently. Um, but I've got everything else. I've got uh, um, I've got the tripods and the shock mounts and the the actual microphones themselves, and we got the external recorder because I can't plug in XLR mics to my computer, obviously. Oh. And um, so we'll be running everything through there. But in the end, it should get a a cleaner sound and. Um, also importantly for those of you who complain from time to time about how Gary and I are at different volumes, um, I'll be able to adjust those independently. That'll be so, sweet. uh, we should be able to, to match up a little better. Awesome. Exciting stuff. Yeah. In the world of podcasting. And, um, I have just been given a Christmas gift, uh, as they came in the door and it is four roses. And so Very good. we're going to give this a try. Oh, I've been drinking on mine. I like it. I do too. Sweet. It's, it's very yeah. sweet. And that's probably the reason I like it. I like a sweet yeah. whiskey. No, but it's got a nice flavor. Yeah. It's got a nice after flavor. It's like, a, mm-hmm. I don't know how to describe it, but it's, it's... It's a little woody, actually. Yeah. It's different from most other stuff, though. Yeah. I like it. All right. Well, and... uh Let's see. I thought there was something else that I had to say before we, before we actually got started. <laughs> but I can't remember what it is. Um, it must have been important. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, well, so, interviews we were looking at. Is that, that's not what it was. Oh, no. Um, it wasn't, although I did get some response on that. But we'll reveal more of that later. Well, just kind of let everybody know, though. Things to come. Yeah. No details, but there's yeah. exciting things to come. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you'll some hear from some of your favorite libertarian characters in the next year. Yeah. Uh, hopefully in the next few months, actually. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll see how that works out. Um, anybody who wants to give me a crash course in Skype? <laughs> We're going to need that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'd appreciate that. How yeah. about you, Callie? Do you know Skype? I love Skype. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> My friends does, but I don't. Look into that for us. Okay. <laughs> Our, our new tech advisor. Right. Um, okay. And uh, so, but what we're going to do for you today is another uh, crazy things that libertarians say. This, so yeah. this one will be crazy things libertarians say two. 2.0. Yeah. Um, so actually, you wanted to start us off with a recent news story. Well, yeah. Just, um, and this may be something some people's heard about. Maybe not. I don't know. kind of depends on your vantage point. But they moved the smoking age up to 21. 
Um, and they actually did that in an omnibus bill. Maybe I'm pronouncing that correct. But yeah. the, the big spending bill that they just passed a couple of weeks ago had in it a provision to move the smoking age nationally to 21. Um, and this affects me because I work in retail. And it's one of those things that's really weird kind of how they did it because, like, there was almost no grace period. Like, so I think we had maybe two weeks from when they passed the bill to when we had to start enforcing that. Um, and I I have a lot of problems with that. I don't know how Mike feels. But it's it's been interesting talking to people because – you know, I talk, I work, so I talk to people a lot about these type of things. I work in retail and we, all of our signs in our store right now are like, literally it says 19 and we've crossed through it and put 21 on it. Which is already weird for Alabama though, because Alabama had the age at 19, 19 instead of 18, which is what it was most places. It's, it's right? pretty well standard across the country. There were some places that have moved to 21 ahead of this, mm-hmm. some states and whatnot, um, when I looked into it a little bit, but we're pretty, but it's national now. And 19 was kind of an odd one. It was usually either 18 or 21, Mm -hmm. but in Alabama it's been 19. Um, But yeah, so all of my signs are like cross through. So people ask questions and just talking to people and everybody I talk to is in support of it. They're like, Oh, well that's great. They they need to do that. It's been needing to happen for a long time and things like that. Well, doesn't it make it a lot easier for you anyway? Cause now you only have one birth date that you need to look for. It's true. That that's not, that's, you're not wrong about that, but that's not, I mean, I, I, I just agree with it. I mean, to me, if you're 18, you're an adult. If we're going to say that, if the government's going to say that 18 is the age that you're an adult, then you need to be an adult at 18. I mean, if that's going to be the arbitrary date time we use, let's use it, you know. I so just, um, should drinking be rolled back to 18? I absolutely think it should be. Um, I'm in full support of that. Um, okay. Well, I, I mean, I, I certainly side with you for the most part there. Of course, I would just abolish those ages entirely. Yeah. Um, the, they're completely meaningless. Now, what I do find interesting, though, is that while they're moving the drinking, uh, the drinking age has remained 21. The smoking age is being moved up to 21. Um, they're also talking about uh, lowering the voting age to like 16 or whatever, too. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, I, I find this to be an interesting dichotomy. We're like, okay, well, you're too stupid to make your own decisions about how you're going to you know, live your life in terms of what you put in your own body. Yeah. But clearly you're intelligent enough and understand the world well <laughs> enough to decide who should rule over the rest of us. <laughs> to right? pick your representatives, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. It's, it's been interesting talking to folks, though, because there's overwhelming support for this, at least that I've seen. Like I mm-hmm. say, I mean, I just have a little small area, you know, people I talk to. But the support of it's for been pretty overwhelming. And it just it boggles my mind. I don't I just I don't understand it, because honestly, because when you talk to people who do support it, they're always like, yeah, but, you know, teenagers are starting to smoke younger and younger. And, you know, they can't be doing that. But this isn't preventing 14 and 15 year olds from smoking. Like there's, I don't understand. Like they've, this already been illegal for them to do this. Yeah. Like so, you're not affecting that at all. Like, yeah, I, I mean, I guess the idea is to reduce the supply somehow this way by raising the age higher. So yeah, make it more. Well, I mean, so the reason I think, and yeah. I, I could be wrong about this, the reason that it was age 19 in Alabama instead of 18 yeah. is to, um at least make it far less likely that a senior in high school would be old enough to buy to cigarettes. To buy them for some right. when at the school. If you're 18 while you're in high school, then um, if the smoking age is 18, then you have seniors who can legally buy cigarettes and then, of course, distribute them to all their 16-year-old friends. Yeah. Um, I, I guess I do kind of get that. Yeah, I mean, it's the only thing that makes sense to me. It could be wrong. It, yeah. it could be just another arbitrary number, just like <laughs> 18 is to begin with. Yeah. Um, it, pushing it to 21, I mean, to me, that's just a complete waste. So it's like saying, uh, well, it's a good thing that they pushed um, the drinking age to 21 to make sure that those freshmen and sophomores in college couldn't get alcohol. <laughs> right, <laughs> because that's how that works, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So now they won't be able to get cigarettes either. Yeah, all right. And, you know, so they yeah. can postpone killing themselves till later on. Yeah. Um, well, and that's because you think, you think about it. Like, how many people do you know started smoking at 18 or 19? 
Uh, nobody. No. I, I can't think of Zero. anybody. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was waiting for that day when I finally turned 19. <laughs> so I could buy my first pack of cigarettes. Yeah, have it's my just, first cigarette ever. Yeah, it just, nah. that's not how that works. Nah. So. Well, uh, I mean, I, I think the, you know, the real issue there is just the, um, of course, the state defining uh, your behavior. Um, in a yeah. way where it doesn't harm others and say what you will about secondhand smoke or what have you I mean they've already made it impossible to smoke in almost any establishment so oh, yeah. if you're out on the street in the open air complaining about secondhand smoke then you need to find better things to do um, <laughs> I'd agree with that 100% yeah. especially down here I mean there's plenty yeah. of open space where well, we live and I don't know because I don't live in this area, but like I've heard like New York City, like you basically even outside, like on the street, you can't smoke. Like, I mean, they're super restricted over where you can and can't smoke. Yeah, I think it's something about uh, that it has to be a certain distance from any doorway to anything. And since everything's so closely packed, it essentially means that you can't smoke, smoke anywhere. anywhere. Yeah. Um, so. I, I don't know though. I yeah, I don't live in those places either. Obviously, yeah. we we live in the um, but it suburban is. at best and <laughs> rural maybe south. So it is weird for me to think about those. <clears throat> so like like even fifteen years ago, like when I was working at where mm-hmm. I work now, um, we used to smoke inside the building. Like we had the break room that was in the stock room, mm-hmm. and we smoked in that break room like all the time. Like yeah. that, and it was permitted. Um, mm-hmm. It's not anymore. Our company has done a zero tobacco and smoking inside. Yeah. And when the store was closed, like we'd walk around the store smoking and do and working. Like yeah. it was that's how you did the the cigarette the the cash registers had cigarette burns on them from where you'd <laughs> sit your cigarette down while you were running reports and stuff. And then you forget about it and it burned too and far down. And it burned too far down. Yeah. Um, but those days have all been long gone. But it seems so foreign now to be able to do that. Like yeah. because like that's to be able to smoke on airplanes. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I remember as a smaller kid, there'd be ashtrays inside grocery stores. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and that's... And like that's, sitting on the corners like of the on the corners of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were all in the store. Mm-hmm. And that all seems so foreign to me now. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, there was a time where that was the norm. Yeah, and, so, I mean, and I guess I'm things, okay with that. Like, I appreciate that now, especially since I quit I smoking. Oh, I absolutely many do. many years ago now, seven, seven or so years it's ago been about, now. It's seven been about seven for me now, too, yeah. Um... And I do, I'm the same way. Like, I mean, I wouldn't want to go into places. I mean, I hate going to to casinos and bars now Mm -hmm. because of just that. And the smoke just irritates me now. However, um, the the decision should be in the hands of the property owner, not in the hands of the state. Agreed. And um, who's the, who is the state to decide what people do in somebody else's private property? Yeah, Um, absolutely. Just generally, unless of course it harms somebody else. And then I guess you could make, once again, you can make the secondhand smoke argument, but I don't think it's a real strong one. You still make a decision by patronizing that place or not. Right. So, and that's just like bars. Like, I mean, I I will go in a smoking bar, but I prefer to go to a bar where there's no smoking allowed. Um, They were, so I was uh, studying anthropology in uh, Georgia when they were enacting uh, stricter smoking laws uh, in terms of inside um, places, inside establishments at that at the time that I was in school, and so I actually did a, a project. I mean, it was mostly kind of ethnographical in the sense that um, I wasn't doing a lot of um, data studies, but I was just going in and talking to um, owners and patrons of various establishments and and asking them how they felt about these changes and. And so forth. And I remember there was one. I, I was talking to a um, an owner of a Waffle House franchise. Ooh. Yeah. And I thought, like, this guy's going to be totally against this. He's going to be so frustrated about yeah. them banning smoking in the Waffle House because this is yeah. like what people do in a Waffle House. Oh yeah, you know? drunk people at three in the morning are having a cigarette in the Waffle House. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember being really surprised at him uh, when I asked him about it, and he said, "Actually, our revenues are up um, yeah. because people don't sit here drinking free coffee and smoking for hours at a time. We have quicker table turnover, um, huh. and we get more." Uh, patrons in and out of the restaurant, and so our revenues are up since they <laughs> then, since they enacted. That's this, interesting. So. You wouldn't think that, but that makes abs- that makes nothing but sense. Yeah. Huh. Um, it's it's completely unrelated to what we're doing here. Although that's something yeah. that they could have done on their own, and then 
you know, yeah. um, maybe there were some Waffle House franchise owners that wanted to uh, restrict smoking in their own restaurants and, and increase that turnover. And maybe there's some other places where that wasn't worth it. Yeah. I mean, because it kind of depends on where you are, too. I mean, I, absolutely. in this particular case, it was at the perimeter in the uh, Shambly dunwoody area. Um, outside of Atlanta, the the north side of Atlanta, um, which is a reasonably well-to-do area. Yeah. And it might not have been the same in some other parts of Atlanta. Yeah. So. But I still, don't still interesting. Though. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I didn't have like a really wide range in terms of geographical locations that I went around asking people. But I did yeah. have a, a fairly wide range in terms of types of establishments that I went in. Yeah. Um, but that was the one that I remember. I remember, remember specifically yeah. because I was surprised at the response. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I probably still have that paper on like a three and a half inch <laughs> disc somewhere. Right. Yeah. Uh, oh, well. I will never be able to retrieve it because I have nothing that'll have play nothing that I'll <laughs> to pull it from. <laughs> no. um, That's funny. But actually, this kind of leads into one of the things that I, um, that I, one of the other things that I wanted to talk about as long as we're on the crazy things. Um, libertarians actually you know um, let's throw something else in there because it, it seems it seems related um so one of those crazy things that libertarians say is that uh and actually you and i i think disagree on this right. um that uh at least the hardcore libertarians <laughs> like myself <laughs> yes um would be opposed to uh, dui laws yeah this is one i this is one i struggle with um, because I understand principally where you're coming from, mm-hmm. but it's just really hard for me to jump on board. Yeah. It, it just is. Well, it, it's related to the smoking thing because the idea, I think, from the state is that we're protecting people from themselves. Yeah. Um, and then there's the – was it Spooner? I think I've quoted him before. Uh, it says that uh, no one wishes to be protected either in their person or their property from themselves. Yeah. Right. And- um and I agree with you on that, especially with the smoking deal even more because, I mean, you're really only hurting yourself. I mean, you make an argument for secondhand smoke, maybe. Yeah. Uh, in certain – I would I would say in certain situations, maybe. Mm-hmm. But um, the DUI thing is a little different to me because you, you have the potential at least. And I know we're getting into like thought crimes and whatnot. So I already know where you're <laughs> – I already know where my, Mike's mind's going. But – but you do have the potential for deadly consequences for other parties other than yourself. Um, and I've heard, like, so honestly, like, the odds of you killing somebody in a DUI situation on a motorcycle is pretty low. So if you want to drive your motorcycle around <laughs> drunk. Oh, I'm, no, there's a, there's high odds of you killing somebody on a motorcycle. It's just going to be you. <laughs> it's, well, yeah, exactly. And, I'm, and that's why, you know, if you want to get drunk and ride your bike, go for it. Yeah. But before, when you get in the, behind the wheel of a huge Tahoe or something like that, where you have the potential to take out a whole family in mm-hmm. a small car or something, I have a problem with that. Okay. Um, let me ask you this question. Then. All right. Um, do you think that people should be able to smoke cigarettes in their cars? I do. Uh, now here's, here's a scenario for you. All right. Um, you're smoking your cigarette in your car and you, you try and flick the ash out the window. And what actually happens is the cherry falls off the end of the cigarette, comes back in the window and lands in your lap. It's not good. Yeah. And this has probably happened to you before. <laughs> I was, was going to say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've had cherries fly back. Maybe not necessarily in the lap, but I've had them land in the pocket and the, I've had yeah. weird things happen. Okay. <laughs> so then... Your next few seconds of of uh, attention are devoted to not catching yourself on fire, right? So <laughs> right? you're like doing whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. And in that time, you go crashing through some other car. Yeah. I would call that a freak accident. I don't think it's that any that unlikely a scenario. I don't honestly. think it's unlikely of a scenario at all, but I do think that's, that still falls under the pretense of a freak accident, of okay. something weird happening. Mm-hmm. And, and something bad happening. A and, DUI is different. Well, is it though? Uh, I mean, how often do people? Okay, so there are a lot of accidents that are result of DUI, yeah. but how many DUIs result in accidents? In terms yeah. of how often do people get behind the wheel, yeah. intoxicated, and not get in an accident? I'm sure it happens quite a bit. I, I'm sure I, that it is too. I, I know. Um, in fact, I won't even say that. I know it happens quite a bit. Like, right. I mean, obviously. so you're still punishing the potential of something going wrong. And yeah. in my cigarette scenario, 
Um, you could have avoided that possibility entirely by not smoking a cigarette. Yeah. You, right? I, so shouldn't we make a law then to preclude the possibility of that kind of accident <laughs> happening? Yeah, but the probabilities are way... The problem I have with your argument is that the probabilities are kind of astro, not astronomical, but they're pretty high as far as like the cigarette thing versus... Like if you get behind the wheel of a behind the wheel drunk, there's just a lot of potential for bad things to happen there. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of potential for bad things to happen anytime all you get time. behind the wheel. Period. I agree. Oh, uh, I wholeheartedly agree. And you agree. can't make laws for all of them. But so, but and, what you're doing is you're drawing a line that's arbitrary. I'm saying this percentage of the possibility of an accident is worth um, punishing people who haven't actually done anything wrong, just yeah. based on the potential that something could go wrong. Yeah. I, I don't necessarily disagree with you there. I, I don't, but I still can't get behind abolishing DUI laws because it it's just, it's one of those things where, and I have, I, I struggle with, I truly do struggle with this internally because I don't want the state going around enforcing and using things like DUI laws. I keep pointing to my drink. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all can't right see after that. We're, right after we're done here, you can go get in the car. I am. <laughs> yeah. But at any rate, I, I can't get behind the government. Infor- the, w- I have a problem with the way government for- enforces stuff like mm-hmm. this because they go what I would believe is too far with it. Right. But, and that's a real big part of the problem with these kinds of laws anyway. Anytime yeah. that you give the um, law enforcement the opportunity to be proactive exactly. in enforcing something, um, it creates antagonistic uh, interactions between law enforcement and civilians. I wholeheartedly uh, where none agree. could have existed. And it creates a, a much greater potential for violence, yep. which is, I would think, on the top of the things that we want to prevent. Absolutely. And so I agree with all of that. I still, to me, doing away with DUI laws, though, is still a bridge too far for me. It, How it, much it do just you think is. that they impact the amount of times people get behind the wheel after drink? I mean, we've just think, been making this argument think, that having a law raising yeah. the the cigarette or the tobacco age to 21 yeah. doesn't do anything really to prevent 14, 15 year olds from smoking. It doesn't. And I think that probably the same is true of DUI laws. Just punishing know. people, I don't know, is actually that effective in preventing the behavior. I think, here's what I believe though. I believe that if you did away with DUI laws, that it's one that you would see a lot more people get behind the wheel drunk than do currently. Like, I, I just, I believe that. Like, if there was no chance of getting stopped and getting arrested, the only chance, the only fear you'd have was, well, I better not get in a wreck. I think you'd see a lot more people rolling those dice than you do now. I don't know that that's true. Um, it's purely conjecture, and you may be right. Um, but as it is, you're also making criminals out of a bunch of people that wouldn't be criminals otherwise. I agree. That they would have driven home safely um, without any problems at all, and instead they're in jail. Yeah. Potentially, or they may would have drove into a family full of... Well, you, you can't... <laughs> but the, pro- I'm, the I'm problem, you can't the problem create is... create laws on the possibility that something... Well, that, do, that but, you'll actually commit a crime. Um, you're I, creating well, a crime where there isn't one in order to prevent a crime where there is already. It's true. But do you believe that drinking inhibits your driving ability? Absolutely. Okay. So we so we agree on that then. Yeah, absolutely. So and I think that everybody knows that too. Yeah, well, I think everybody knows that too. Which and is do you of, think that smoking cigarettes increases your chance of uh, of having lung cancer or emphysema? It absolutely does. All right. And do you think that people are unaware of that? Absolutely not. All right. I'm just saying that to, the the difference between the two of those is that one, when you're smoking a cigarette, you're only hurting yourself. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we live in a country you're free to do that. You have the potential to hurt other people when you drive drunk. Yeah, you have the potential to hurt other people when you do a and lot of things. A lot of things, but but there's not a whole lot of question whether or not you're going to be a better driver sober than you are drunk. Mm-hmm. So we should have everybody driving sober. Okay. Like, and so the, that's the, but that's the, that's the, what I work from. That's that's where I'm com- That's where my mindset is coming mm-hmm. from. From this, I, I like I say. I have a lot of problems with it. I'm not saying I don't, but I just, I can't wipe away the UI laws. Like, yeah. if, if I'm ever the guy, like, if I, that's just where I'm at with it. Well, I, I have a real issue with punishing people for potential. For pre-crime. Yeah, for potential I, I, damage. I, I agree. I don't... Um, and I think that in order to remain logically consistent, you would have to get rid of that. Too. And you're not wrong. You're absolutely not wrong. 
but I can't. I still can't get on board. I'm still not on the bus, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, if now we know that if Gary's in charge, that he will continue to enforce laws to prevent the possibility of damage. Well, this law. <laughs> <laughs> well, why stop there, though? Yeah. Well, that's that's we, we know where I would stop. We know, that's where I would stop. I mean, it. I mean, there's. It really is one that I just like. I say I can't get behind it, man. Okay. Well, I mean, we've talked before uh, on the previous crazy things libertarians should say yeah. that all drugs should be legal. I'm I'm down for that. All right. Well, I mean, there are some drugs that definitely increase your chances of violence against somebody else. It's true. So, so true. why are they on the list of things that should still be allowed, whereas <sighs> <laughs> drinking and driving is not? You're, like I say, I, well, so give me an example of a drug you're referring to. Uh, let's say methamphetamines. Yeah. I, I just, I do believe a lot of the violence that's around methamphetamines, though, is, is around the fact that it's illegal. Mm-hmm. And I think you would curb a lot of that by legalizing it. I think you would remove a whole segment of that yeah and in in the end because here's here's what i'm all anytime like i'm not a big fan of laws period mm-hmm. i mean I'm, i am a libertarian but any, if you're gonna have a law it are needs, you though <laughs> well okay, mike's no, questioning sorry. me but but if you're gonna have laws they they need to be set in a way to do the most good so obviously outlawing crystal meth in my mind does the least good because there's more violence around the acquisition of it than there are of the actual use of it. So you're not doing, the law isn't doing good. A DUI law, while I have my issues with it, and I do, mm-hmm. I do believe you're going to get the most good out of having that. Okay. Um, for society. No, I think that you're probably whole. also thinking of it in an urban, suburban environment. Okay. okay. What about, I mean, we live in a state where there's like broad stretches of nothing. Yeah. Okay. Um, what about people drinking and driving out there? Yeah. Well, and we go Where back. there's almost no chance of them harming well, anybody else. We go back to one of our principles here, though. Mm-hmm. So I think that each area should be able to make laws and rules for their okay. own areas. So I wouldn't yeah. be for a national DUI law. No, mm-hmm. I absolutely wouldn't support that, um, which is part of my problem with the 21. That's a national law for, right. the, for the tobacco, um, which I have a problem with that, too. But... Um, when it comes to the DUI, though, I think if uh, it, all areas should be able to choose for themselves. So, like, yeah, out way up in Alabama where there's nobody anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think if that area decided they wanted to abolish DUI laws, I mean, I may not be for it if I lived there, but I wouldn't be as against it as I would be like here in town. Yeah. You know? Because okay. because there's because because of just what you said, I mean that would be the argument is look there's nobody on these roads anyway, yeah. <laughs> you know the, the, it's more likely you're going to hit a tree than anything else. Yeah, except for the one cop that's out there looking for somebody that's dr- driving yeah. drunk so that they can collect some. Well, money for and the state. and in an area like that, <laughs> odds are you everybody knows everybody anyway, and if mm-hmm. that cop sees that guy that's obviously not, shouldn't be on the road, mm-hmm. his his responsibility should be more to help that guy than it should be to arrest him anyway. Okay. Uh, all right, so I, like, and I'm okay with some level of enforcement in terms of, um, like, you see somebody weaving around on the road, yeah. uh, you pull them over, you check to make sure they're okay. Now the question then is jail time. Like, yeah. if it turns out that they're drunk and they're out there driving, yeah, do they deserve to be locked in a cage, or yeah. do you instead take them out of their car? Take them home and, you know, make them go pick up their car in the morning, however, you know, or impound it even and well, make and them pay to get we, it back out. When we come to as actual punishment, so I'm obviously for the UI laws. Mm-hmm. When we come to, like, punishments, like if it was me making the decisions, I think that would be more the way you'd enforce them anyway. That I don't think you'd have serious jail time pulling people's license unless it was just something that was pressing on and on and on. Yeah. Like, I mean, if we're picking up Joe Blow every week. Off the side, <laughs> because he can't seem to keep his car on the road. Mm-hmm. Maybe we need to do something about that. But one time, like somebody, maybe I don't know. But if, as far as punishments go, I, I'm not for ruining somebody's life over one time when they didn't hurt anybody. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it does that right now already. Like I, I don't know if you have one, it on your applications uh, yeah. for your uh, for your company. Yeah. Um, but I have seen more and more. 
applications for jobs that ask, have you ever been convicted of a DUI? Oh, yeah. Um, you see, and I have a problem with that, although, I mean, it is a private company making the decision about who they want sure. to bring on board. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I still have my issues with that. Well, and I have, you know, we can... Uh, we can talk about it some other time, or we can talk about it now. I don't right, care we're, way. we're doing crazy things right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, I, I, I think that that's an issue with the the quote unquote justice system as it is. Yeah. Um, that when you've been convicted of something and you serve your time and you get back out, and then the fact that you served time for whatever conviction is used against you, uh, and and like you said, private employers, I'm you know. They, they can, can choose to hire or fire whoever they want. Yeah. Um, and uh, like I don't have a particular problem with that, but I I do have a problem with the mindset, I guess, um, that that somebody is always then to blame yeah. um, after they've committed a crime. Uh, yeah. Because the whole idea of them serving their time is that they've served their penance for the wrongdoing. Absolutely. Um, and they're supposed to be... So I do have problems with... Preventing felons from voting. Yes. Uh, once they've they've paid served their, their once, time. Once they've once they've prison. paid their due, they've paid mm-hmm. their due. Right. You know. Um, and uh, denying them even their uh, even denying them what I consider to be their basic rights, like uh, firearms ownership. Yeah. Um, you know, even if they've been convicted of a violent crime, they went in there, well, they served their time, and the idea is that they have been rehabilitated. Well, that's right? what I was fixing to say, and that's the difference between what we do now and what we should be doing when we arrest somebody on any crime anyway. Um, the whole idea of going to jail should be to re- rehabilitate you. To, to make you, when you leave jail, be a more better person to society than when you went in. And we all know that that's the opposite like right yeah. now. You, nobody goes comes out of jail better than they went in, and they just don't, unless they've done it on their own. It's not because the system helped with that. Yeah. Well, and then, you know, the, the question becomes, well, if they haven't been rehabilitated, then why are you letting them back out? Right? Well, exactly. Yeah. If, <laughs> if what they did was so wrong that you need to put them in a cage for however many years, if yeah. they're not better, then why, why did, are you putting them back out into because the Because we got so public? many of them in cages right now, we can't do right. anything, which is, which is a problem, which, mm-hmm. which means we have too many laws and we're trying to enforce too many things. Yeah. Um, did you hear the, the uh, thing um, Pete Buttigieg was... Uh, saying that he um, felt that they should decriminalize all drugs. Um, I don't think I did. He was, well, he said this recently, um, and he was getting a lot of pushback, and his main things was was that I don't think people should be serving um, all this time uh, for possession. Okay. Um, he said, you know, you're caught in possession of any drug. I think that it should be decriminalized. I don't think that you should be serving time for possession. Yeah, um, that we're either going to treat this as a as a crime or as a health problem, and that you know he feels that we should treat it as a health problem. I agree that you with shouldn't him. Shouldn't tra- serve jail time for the for possession of any drug. I wholeheartedly agree with that. Well, I do too. Um, in fact, I would go the step farther from yeah. him and say, uh, you know, forget decriminalize, like legalize. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, I I absolutely, but at least that would be a step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Um, so as long as we, it, let's try and get back on track to what we'd actually plan to talk about. Uh, cause I, I was having some discussions with family, uh, while they were in town for, um, the, for Christmas and we got to talking about vaccinations. Oh, that's right. We want, I, I was trying to remember what all we had on tab. It was vaccinations. Yeah. Wasn't it? Vaccinations. Um, this one I find to be really interesting. And you picked a bunch that we disagree on. <laughs> So you think that the state should require vaccinations? This one is a hard one, too. Now, I'm not... Actually, I don't. I'm going to go on and go say no. I don't think that the state should be enforcing vaccinations. Mm-hmm. I get why people want the state to do that. Mm-hmm. I just don't believe government has... I just I don't I don't yeah. think I can trust my government enough to mm-hmm. allow them to do that. Well, and I, I get why people want the state to enforce a whole lot of things. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't make it okay. Agreed. Uh, again, it, you know, it comes down to like I get why some people want to have a state religion. Like I get why people <laughs> want this, but it doesn't mean that it's the right. We thing already to have do. a state religion. That it's, it's called government. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, so, and I, let me put it on the record right now that I am not an anti-vaxxer. 
Okay. I, I believe in vaccinations. Okay. Um, I think that I think that you should get your kids vaccinated for a, a great many things. Um, yeah. Most of those vaccinations have been around for a long time. I like the yeah. MMR and like if you step on a nail, you should go get your tetanus shot. And yeah. you know, in fact, I need a tetanus mm-hmm. or I need a uh, not that I need a tetanus. I haven't stepped stepped on the nail today, but I like to stay <laughs> up to date on that just yeah. in case I do. I don't want to have to go if I step on a nail. I want to yeah. have it done. True. I, and I don't I'm know, It's fun to race through traffic with oh, a nail in your that. foot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, not doing it. I want my tetanus shot now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I do believe in vaccinations. Um, however, uh, I don't think that it should be state enforced. Agreed. Um, the the and, question is whether you think it's okay for the state to to decide for you what you're going to put in your own kits. Yeah. Um, and I, this is one I've went back and forth on, and I'm kind of landed where you're at now. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a time where I was like, well, God, I was the same way where I was with the DUIs, where I was mm-hmm. like, you know, this is just a necessary thing. The problem is, is as I've gotten older, my trust for government has slipped. <laughs> See, and it's not even really about trust for government. For me, it's just about it's just about bodily autonomy. Yeah. Um, now, I, I will also... And part of the reason this has come up is because there there are a bunch of states that are starting to require a new vaccine, which is the HPV yes. uh, vaccine. Yes. Now, this is um, something that they're requiring of both boys and girls. Really? Um, yeah. I didn't know uh, that. Like, I knew uh, they were... Sixth grade or something like that. Um, it is a behavioral virus. It is a sexually transmitted disease. Okay. Uh, so it can be controlled by behavior. Um, it affects something like... Six percent of of men, and uh, it's it's only like fifteen or something percent of women. So it affects a small amount of the population to begin with. It's controllable through behavior, and the reason is that uh, it it has been correlated with some forms of cancer. Oh, okay. Right? Um, but of your, we'll say roughly ten percent of the population that ends up being infected. Uh, mm. Even a smaller percentage of that ends up with cancer. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a portion of a portion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, but here's the... and Actually, we're going to come back to this because um, I, I do want to talk about that in some depth, and I, but I, I want to set some things, things up, up first. Okay. Um, one is, all right, so the measles vaccine. The measles vaccine does, in fact, kill more people than measles virus does in this country. Now... Yeah. That I mean, that is a that, yeah. that is a statistical fact. Okay. That is not to say yeah. that if we abolished the vaccine, yeah. that there wouldn't be more people dying from measles than currently die from the vaccine. Yeah. All right. Because measles is a problem. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's um. So or it can be a problem. It's not know, a problem now. But. There's some truth in what the anti vaxxers say. Yeah. Um. There has been some correlation with some uh, other problems and so forth too. Uh. Correlation is not causation. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean doesn't mean it's not causation, but it doesn't necessitate causation, obviously. Um, and so there there is truth in what anti vaxxers say. Yeah. Um, but that being said, I don't think that it's a good argument and a strong argument not to protect your kids. I think that you should do that. Now, yeah. because I think you should do that, yeah. does not give me the right to use the power of the state to make you do that. I'd agree with all right. of that. And uh, when I was um, debating this with my uh, with my brother and sister in law, um, the first thing that uh, that my brother said was, "Well, if you don't get your kids vaccinated, um, then you shouldn't be able to take them to public school." <laughs> okay. Now let's find out what Mike thinks about public school. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I wasn't going to launch into that right now. Uh, remember, I ran for board of education. Yes, you did to abolish it. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe. Um, I wouldn't have had much success in, in abolishing it. Uh, I didn't have much success in the campaign either. So you know, um, but uh, I, you know, and I, I'm okay with that actually. Like, yeah, I, I think that these groups can can get together and decide what they want to allow or not. Yeah. Um, of course, to me, the answer is that you privatize that whole thing, right? So if uh, if you are in a community that believes in vaccinations and doesn't want your kid to go to the school where the rest of them go, then you can have a private school that does let your kid in and other kids that haven't been vaccinated. Fine. Yeah. Not a problem. This is easily handled through privatization. Absolutely. Um, now back to the, to the HPV thing. Yeah. Uh, this is what a lot of this is really about, I think. Okay. And 
it, it's not a comment on the merits of vaccinating, um, but it is a comment on the drive uh, for state control of this kind of thing or, or state mandate yeah. of this kind of thing. Um, there are two, two different vaccines that I'm aware of uh, based on my brief research on this um, for the, for the HPV and uh, one of them is Gardasil. I think it was. I should have written Gar- that down. I've heard of Gardasil. Um, well, and there's another one, and I, I can't remember what it's called. But it doesn't matter because that one isn't allowed to be used in the United States. Oh, really? Right. Only Gardasil is allowed to be used in the, ni- in the United States. That's the only huh. um, HPV vaccine available. Now, Gardasil is, uh, is manufactured by Merck. Yeah. You know, big pharma Merck. Yep. Um, and they produce the vaccine for something like $50 a dose. Okay. And then they sell the vaccine for between $200 and $300 a dose. And there are three doses required in the vaccination Process. round, right? Yeah. So now this is what's what happens in the end, is that when the state requires the vaccination for HPV, then every single student in a public school gets between $600 and $900 uh, of cost associated with that. Um, and of that, uh, like $400 uh, to $700 goes to Merck as profit. Really? Yeah. <laughs> um, because that's the, you know, that's the economic reality and, and of the we, vaccination. Are we to just assume that it's an accident that only one company is allowed to do this? Oh, of course. I mean that's just that's just well I mean you know they're the we got to have the FDA to regulate these things right, right right and make sure that there's no competition yeah exactly because that's all that is like there's no reason to believe that this other company has any worse of a product they're no. just not allowed to operate here in the yeah. US I mean it, they're sold uh, internationally no yeah. no problem actually I think the other one is also an American company but it may be French I don't know. I'm not yeah. sure. So I, I don't remember either. But my point, though, is there's there's no way this is an accident. There's money being shuffled around here. Mm-hmm. So yeah, um, and it's the same kind of thing as the uh, uh, epipens. they yeah. requiring all schools to purchase a bunch of epipens just in case. Um, the epipens are really expensive. They shouldn't be, but they are. But they are. Yeah. Um, and the reason they are is again the FDA limits that there's only two companies that can produce et- the epipens in this in the U.S. Yeah. Um, and one of them has like ninety percent of the market share, and that's of course the one that managed to lobby successfully to have their product put in every public school. Yep. Um, you know, and this is uh, another one of those things where. Uh, in the case of the EpiPen, the schools are purchasing it, so it's a transfer of tax money to um, the company that produces it. Yeah. Uh, in the case of the HPV vaccine, um, most insurance companies don't pay for it, and it would be the families themselves that had to pay for it. So it's a it's a direct transfer from the parents of any of these students um, to Merck. Yeah. In the form of revenue. Yeah. Um, so consider Which, those things too when you're. But free market <laughs> would fix a lot of this problem because, like, the, in the deal with the EpiPen, it's not like there's other companies that wouldn't love to produce this product. And I'm not against the schools purchasing them to have them on hand if they need them. Mm-hmm. I'm, my problem would be in that there's only one place to get them. Yeah. And that the price is astronomical because of that. Yeah. If you open this market up, plenty of companies would produce these EpiPens. And the price would fall quickly. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know. We covered vaccinations to a point where we think it's okay. Yeah. I, I think I would just kind of like to sew it up um, yeah. with this one, uh, you know, comment on it. Is that um, if you allow the state to decide for parents what they will put into their children, yeah, who's really w- raising the kids? The parents or the state? Yep. And then think about who you would prefer to raise your kids, <laughs> you or the state. Yeah. And there may be some people out there that think that the, it's okay, like the state has a role in this. And yeah. so in this highly partisan world um, that we're in right now, uh, let me ask the question this way. Um, how many of you uh, think that Trump's government should raise your kid? <laughs> because... Well, you're half in the, of you. You're in the South, so <laughs> yeah. you're going to get a response on that one. <laughs> yeah. um, half of you, likely, uh, hopefully more, but uh, half of you are going to say, no, that's terrible. What a terrible idea. Um, and then the other half of you, roughly, are going to say, I don't have any problem with Trump's government 
raising my kids. And so for those of you, I will ask this other question, yeah. which is how do you feel about Obama's government raising your kids? Because I imagine that the answer is different. And if the answer is you don't have a problem with it for both of those questions, then you need to listen to this podcast more so we can convince you not to trust the state so much. Yeah, um, yeah, because that's, that's exactly <laughs> what I was fixing to say, because guess what? Both of those are the wrong answer. <laughs> yeah. Neither yeah. one is right. <laughs> yeah. So um, if you want to have control of your kids, and I promise you the state wants control of your kids. Oh, there's no question. Um, there's, that, that's not even a question in my Then mind. this is just one of those things. Yep. Yep. Um, and is there a limitation to what uh, what all they'll require of you if you let them keep adding additional well, vaccines? Then exactly, exactly. Um, where was I going to go from there? There was something interesting that I was going to go to from there. Oh, uh, because of the the discussion about the FDA limiting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, here's another one of those crazy things libertarians say that was not on the list here and probably should have been. Um, but it now seems like a really good time to talk about it yeah. is, uh, uh, no patent laws. Ha ha. Yeah. That's where we were heading with the, with the EpiPen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so a, a lot of people disagree that people should be able to hold patents for some period of time to protect the investment that they made to produce whatever product or, um, yeah. or service or what have you. And, uh, the, the pure libertarian is opposed to that. Yeah. Um, that there shouldn't be patent laws. That if you produce a product and somebody else can do it better, then good for them. You'll yeah. always get an initial period where you're the only person in the market. Where you're the only one in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everybody else has to catch up when you, pr when you produce something new. Yeah. Uh, now, they say that what this does, uh, the argument for patent laws is essentially that you have to protect... Um, the product for a period of time uh, to allow the company to get um, a profit out of it or they won't be motivated to produce additional products. Yeah. Right. Because there's no, it, there, then there's no incentive to, to innovate and produce something new. Yeah. And I think that that's completely backwards, actually. Yeah. Um, especially the way patent laws work now. I would be, you know, as long as we're going the same way on the train, I'm good with this. So if you want to reduce the length of time yeah. the patents are in effect, then, you know, follow me for as far as we can go. You know, yeah. as far as you're willing to go with that. When you get off the train, I'll try and get you to get back on and yeah. go ahead and bring that number down to zero. But um, if you want to go, particularly in the medical field, I think it's seven to ten years yeah. um, are the patents. And then they can renew patents based on other uh, uses of the drug. Uh, um, see, that's a problem. That's garbage right there. Yeah. Well, even seven to ten years, I think, is obscene. It's a lot, yeah. Um, and like I said, I, the, well, but the argument is that it it um, it would stifle innovation to get rid of patents because it, people wouldn't have an incentive to produce something new. Yeah. Um, I think that what patents actually do is allow people to rest on their laurels and not produce anything and new. And not do anything. Well, that's like the deal with the EpiPen. Like, how long have EpiPens been around now? For decades. Yeah, yeah. And, exactly. Mm -hmm. And we're still on these same patent laws with the EpiPen because there's only one company that produces Well, them. now it's the uh, – there's two. Is there? Um, I mean, there's plenty of companies that produce epinephrine, but there's two companies that produce the epipens yeah. um, that are in use. And the patent isn't on the drug anymore. The patent is on the delivery the system. The delivery system. Yeah. Ah, I got gotcha. you. So um, they keep, uh, they give them an opportunity to renew it based on something else. Yeah. And, and so for a lot of drugs, what it happens to be is that it's, uh, it's produced to, um, um, fight heart disease, uh, but it also lowers blood pressure. And yeah. so after the the limit of the patent, they renew the patent um, from preventing heart disease to lowering blood pressure. Uh, they can repatent it under a different treatment. Yeah. yeah. See, that's garbage. Or a different effect. I mean, that's garbage. Um, now, I think that if you got rid of patent laws entirely, it would actually encourage more innovation because it gives you less time uh, to... Um, reap the benefits of any new production that you have. Yeah. So well, it encourages you, be, you to. So you want to be constantly producing something new. Something new, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You're not leaning on the old stuff you've done. You want to have that new thing that bring that new revenue in. Yeah. And it helps the consumer because then once these other companies finally do figure it out, there's mm -hmm. more of it on the market. Right. 
which is the problem with the EpiPen. The problem with EpiPen is there's not enough on the market. There's not yeah. enough out. That's the reason the price is so high. You had mm-hmm. a bunch of other companies start producing this product, the the price would drop. Because thanks to the government's help, you have an essential monopoly. Exactly. Uh, on the product. Exactly. Um, whereas Which is loosen- crazy because that's what the libertarians always get hit on the head with. Well, if, if we didn't have government controlling these things, there would be monopolies everywhere. But in reality... The government is the one that's creating these monopolies. That's yeah. not that's not a cap, that doesn't happen in, tr- in true capitalism. You'd have no monopolies because well, there would it, always be somebody mm-hmm. there to produce the product cheaper. Yeah, it'll happen for a time, but other people will see an opportunity some way or another. Yeah, um, to get into the market, and there's lots of other ways to get into the market, and and people don't that maybe people don't recognize. So if you have a company that has an essential monopoly on a new product, that they've created something new and interesting, some product that they're giving out to people, um, when other companies figure it out, it is going to drive the price down because, and maybe even not at first, because when the companies first produce it, they're probably going to, it's probably going to cost them more because they haven't had the experience with it. Meanwhile, presumably the company that produced it in the first place, if they know they can't rest on it for seven to 10 years at a time, um, has been trying to find ways to produce more uh, with less input um, to lower their own prices. And for as long as they're able to do that, they'll keep competition out of the market, direct competition out of the market. But there's other ways in too. So you can have like a fancier version of it um, or just a a higher quality version of it that it costs more, but the quality is better. Um, or you can have a lower quality version that costs less. Um, there's a lot of different ways to attack a market like that. Yeah. And you end up with a, a diversity and a competition that creates a lot more opportunities for everybody involved or all the consumers involved. Yeah. Um, so you can you can pay more for better. You can pay less for worse. Um, you can just go with the, the, the standard. Uh, you know, maybe somebody can get one that does whatever it is faster. Um, somebody can get one that has more power. Like you think about tools or things like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you got your, uh, your drill that the, the drill bit spins faster and faster and faster. So you can get your drilling done faster. Um, but maybe that's no good for the guy that's drilling through concrete. He needs more torque. Like he needs real power to get through whatever he's drilling. You know, there's yeah. a lot of different ways to develop the product in different directions. Absolutely. Uh, and all of those things uh, are end up being difficult to attack if there's strong patent loss. Yeah. And so prices remain up and you don't get all the diversity in the market and there isn't competition and prices don't go down and the consumer doesn't have options. And uh, like all of that seems bad for the consumer. Exactly. So, uh, so that's my argument for no patents. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We we didn't talk about the thing. We only talked about one of the things that we had planned to talk about today. Yeah. But I, I think that that's a that's a good place to stop, uh, probably right there with mm. a nice pitch for a real free market. Um, huh. well, I mean, it just shows once again that the only way that you can maintain a monopoly is with government help. With government help, that's um, that's, the, that's the only way, at least that I know of, in in like our history that has been done. Right? I mean, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I can't think of any any alternative examples um even when they were attacking uh the trusts when the government was attacking the trust trusts and tearing apart these big companies yeah. they were already losing market share at the point that the government got involved. when they got involved i mean and yeah. that's just like that's a really typical story of government where government um uh moves into something and there's already a trend going in the direction that the government wants it to go and the government steps in and makes a law and claims uh to be they, responsible they, for <laughs> claims the they result. did this we did uh, this yeah when it was no. actually the market that was already making that change yeah um like uh uh child labor is another yeah. one of those same things like yeah. child labor was already leaving the market yeah um there was already a strong trend away from child labor but then the government stepped in and made a law and said that they made things better for everybody <laughs> yeah well, well I, the, they, we, but they were unnecessary yeah maybe you sped up the process a little bit but the market was working it out yeah right yeah yeah exactly i mean when you know We can get on child labor sometime, too. That would be another uh, crazy things libertarians say. Um, But I'll just uh, just suffice it to say with that, that in places where child labor is an issue, uh, it's not that those kids would be going to school or leading very productive lives if they weren't working in the factories. Um, It's that they would likely be starving uh, if they weren't working at the factories. Like people do what's what's necessary 
to survive. Yeah. And it's uh, in most cases where there's um, a, a problem of child labor, the alternative is worse. Yeah. So ah, there you go. Um, so we get to mark one thing off our list. All right. <laughs> <laughs> This now, is the, a, <laughs> the good news for the rest of you is that we've got a lot more of this that we can keep doing. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> we've got to do these periodically because these are fun, man. Yeah. I enjoy these. We didn't even hit taxation as theft. Woo! Uh, <laughs> That'll be a fun one. <laughs> um, Unfortunately, so maybe, I feel like we're in pretty strong agreement on that one. Yeah. The ones uh, that tend to be fun are the ones where we don't agree. Well, that's that's true. Uh, there's always the opportunity to try and express it in a way. I mean... Like we can make the arguments against taxation oh, yeah. being theft. Like uh, we we've, we've both had this conversation with people with that disagree with so us so many times. Yeah. Um, well, and that's part of the fun thing with this too is mm-hmm. like I mean I've heard all of the counter arguments to all of us, you know, because that's because that's the norm. Like that's normally we're trying to change people's ways of thinking here. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, um, with a lot of this stuff, and I, I hope that I was able to stress it enough with the DUI thing. Um, one of the things that is often not considered that should be considered. And it's actually the main thing that changed my position on, um, on, uh, borders. Yeah. Is the, what is required to enforce the law? Yeah. And what kind of impact does that have? Exactly. And I I think that people, people tend to forget that aspect of, of laws, uh, in general is, uh, what's required to enforce those laws. Yeah. And, um, which and what is, kind of impact is that? Which have? is where my problem is with the DUI thing. But I mean, that's that's where my my problem is is the enforcement. Yeah, but it's not. It doesn't stop you from wanting to have the law. It doesn't. No. In that case, it doesn't, man. I'm just going to go and say I'd I'd like to. I'm going to mess around on the Liberty Mike page. I'd like to take a poll and just see who all that follow the page is in favor or against on the Facebook page. On the Facebook page, okay. Yeah, and see kind of where where our listeners fall on this one. Okay. Um, as far as the I mean, DUI I, I've laws. got a prediction that I am in the minority. <laughs> well, I would imagine too, but I'm curious because it's in, it's an interesting question. I mean, that's. I think most of our listeners are not, at least not expressly libertarian. Yeah. They may have libertarian tendencies, um, but you know, I, I don't think I don't think uh, most of our listeners um, would take the radical positions that, that I tend to that take. We take, yeah, in general, yeah. So. Yeah, that we take in general, and that, and that, I, that I, I you take more than I. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd be curious. I'll have to mess around with the page. I don't know how to set up polls and stuff, but I'm sure there's a way to do it. Yeah, actually, I, I tried to do one before. As long as you only have two choices, though, um, they tend to be fairly easy, yeah. as I recall. Well, if you want what, more choices, then you have to set it up for like a select group or something. I, I couldn't. couldn't we don't really. Out. I mean, no. I mean, I kind of figured it out. We just don't have a. It's not a private page. Ah, I got gotcha. you. So yeah. it, it limits your options with polls. Okay. But we can talk about that off We'll tinker off with mic. it. Yeah. Um, so anyway, looking forward to good things in the coming year. Uh, but uh, I'm not making any wishes yet. And <laughs> um, we, uh, yeah, I guess uh, we'll be back in a couple of days is the plan. That's absolutely the plan. You know, we both got a lot going on right mm-hmm. now. So, I mean. We'll see how things go. But yeah, I, I, end of year is rough in finance, and I'm, I suppose, in retail, too. It is in retail, too. Yeah. <laughs> so. But, yeah, the plan is to be back Thursday. Yeah. And hopefully back on schedule, like, consistently. Again. After that. Yep. But we'll see. No promises. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, in the meantime, uh, follow us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe on iTunes or Podbean. Um what else? There's other stuff, right? Oh, uh, like and share and all those other things. Leave reviews. Yeah. Whatever. All those things that can help us get out to more and more people. And uh, hopefully I, I recruited some listeners over the holiday uh, holiday week. Oh, uh, another um, possibility for the coming year is that there's a uh, another guy, a friend of ours, um, who... I've talked to that has expressed a little interest in um, co-hosting from time to time. Again, requiring some knowledge of Skype, which I will need to acquire. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but that should be fun too, um, if we can get that to work out. And what are you doing? Okay, my phone's going off. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. Well, we're we're essentially done. So uh, hopefully you'll all join us Thursday when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Train how you fight. Ciao. Later.